What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Thanks again for joining me. Today, we're going to talk about sundial growers, also known as SNDL. And I found this article. I wanted to give my insight on it and give you guys some um, some advice uh, for the upcoming week. With that being said, just remember, I am not a financial advisor, guys. I'm just some guy on the internet. These are my opinions. Always do your own research before you do any kind of investment, right? Whether that's real estate or stocks or buying your friend's rap album, uh, <laughs> you know, um, just always do your own research. Make sure that you guys are informed about where you're putting your money. Um, also, full disclosure, I am an investor in SNDL. So just remember, I got in at this, uh, I think I got in the stock about 81 cents, I believe. Um, so yeah, I've been in it for a while. Um, but yeah, just keep that in mind as well. So let's go ahead and get into this. All right, so The Motley Fool put this article out and it basically says that SNDL has an implied downside of 82%, which would value the stock at about 30 cents a share, which I think is a little ridiculous. Uh, right now, um, as of Friday uh, after hours, I think we are at 205 a share. Um, so it would take a lot to bring this from 205 down to 30 cents. It, it just really would. I don't think that's going to happen. Um, but they they're very pessimistic. Even when they give optimism, they they turn it into they twist they, they do a uh, a twist on it that makes it seem a little pessimistic, which is kind of irritating to me. But let's talk a little bit here, guys. So they say aside from the fact that it has a low share price, which has long been a lure for young investors. Let, let me pause that really quick. So they say that young investors are lured by cheap share prices. Um, I would say this is probably true, but I want to kind of give you guys some insight on how you should invest, right? Let's say you have $100. If you buy 100 shares of $1 or shares of uh, a stock that are $1 each and it goes up 10%, you're going to have $110. If you take the same $100 and you put it into a stock that goes up 10%, guess what? You're going to have $110. When you invest, you need to start looking at the percentage of growth, not the amount of shares. So just keep that in mind, okay? Because it's all going to equal out. Um, so yeah, I just want to get that off my chest because, you know, they're talking about that being a lure for young investors. I don't want young investors to be lured by something like that. So, But anyways, they talk about uh, how Sundial has two factors, right? Two things that are good going for it. I actually think there's a few more, and I'm going to go into those, but let's see what they say. So they talk about the Democrats being in control of the government in the United States and how that's a good catalyst for cannabis reform at the federal level, right? So that's true. Uh, Chuck Schumer has went on record uh, saying that they do intend to introduce uh, legislation. Um, I assume that's probably going to happen after the whole stimulus talks and after the fallout from the impeachment. Um, I figure they'll switch gears and start aiming their sights on that. Um, but as of right now, we don't have a clear uh, date or time when that's going to happen. And that's okay. Um, but my opinion is that it will happen. It's probably going to happen a lot sooner than later. The, the problem I have here is they try to put this twist, right? It's an unclear uh, when, the, uh, when this is going to happen, right? And until it does, they won't be able to enter the market. Yeah, no, no crap or no, like no duh, you know, like we're still waiting it's not like we're going to be waiting 10 years for federal legalization of cannabis. It's just not going to be that long, okay? So get that out of your mind already. Secondly, they have a ton of free cash, right? So $610 million to be exact. And they they say, yeah, this is great. You know, you have $610 million of, uh, dollars worth of cash or cash equivalents at its disposal. But then they go, unfortunately... This capital raising activity is precisely why Sundial Growers is such an awful investment, right? In just four months, the company has issued more than 1 billion shares. Duh, that's how as a company you have to raise capital. You know, you're either going to get loans or you're going to you're going to get create shares to raise capital. That's why stocks exist. So companies can get money so they can reinvest it into their business. Hello, this is what the stock market is. So this is their whole argument, right? They're saying that, um, you know, the the reason that uh, the company is going to suffer is because of that, right? 
And I think that's a little, I think that's a little ridiculous. I mean, I, there's a lot of catalysts here. And honestly, guys, the United States isn't the only country in the world that they can sell to. Let's just get that out of the way too. They're, they're making this all about the United States is what they're doing. And it's very irritating. So yeah, as far as it, as far as it going down to 30 uh, cents a share, I think that's, I think that's a little ridiculous. The company's now valued at 39 times its projected year of sales in 2021. But if this, if you think this bothers you, look at companies like Tesla. Tesla is like, their PE ratio is like 1400, I think. Still, I have to double check. It's been a while since I looked. But yeah, you can't really base anything off this anymore. You know, we may be priced in, but the, I don't think the company is going down to 30 cents a share. It's just not happening. So that was the article here. Here's some things I want to talk about, though. This is the Sundial Investors page, right? Where they talk about, you know, investor resources, their presentation, financial results, et cetera. I read a couple of things about them. I like to look at about statements about our company, right? And they remind me a lot of companies like Apple. So they, they have a huge, huge, huge um, importance on, you know, your experience with the company, right? They want you to feel, they want you to be educated, they want it to emphasize health and safety, and they have this packaging. They want to grow their loyalty, uh, their customers, and their brand, right? They want a branding. Branding is what makes companies big, right? Like, if I ask you, hey, what kind of phone would you want? Do you want an iPhone or do you want an Android? What really draws you to those phones? Is it the, the fact that you like the camera on one? Probably not. It's either you like iPhones or you like Androids, right? Like, it, a lot of people don't even really care too much about the specs. They just say, I like Android or I like iPhone and they go for it because they've been, they've been pretty much, uh, I don't even want to say programmed, but they've been educated to have customer loyalty or brand loyalty. Right. And SNDL understands that. And they understand the, the idea of brand loyalty and how important it actually is. Right. So keep that in mind. Now, these are their vape pens. They also, um, you know, they have, this is that, uh, educational uh, part that I was talking about and pretty much they just want to make sure you're educated about what you're buying right like uh, you know if you have any questions you can get them answered right like this is their whole goal and this is their brand and I think it, once you concentrate on that I mean the sky's a limit and in my opinion I think this stock got a lot of attention and it needs to settle down a little bit Okay, so with all that being said, <laughs> the upcoming week is going to be interesting. And I know that most of you are here because you want to understand what to do. You're either confused, like, what do I do? I've seen a lot of comments. What do I do? What do I do? So here's, here's my insight. If you are up in this company right now, like, let's say you're like me, right? You still have, you know, I'm up over 100% still. So if you're up in this company, you need to start thinking about like how much am I willing to lose in order to have a turnaround happen? Because if you want to make profits, that's great. I'm all about profits. A dollar profit is still a profit. Um, but you got to start thinking how much profits do you want to take? If you haven't taken any profits yet, I would probably recommend taking some profits. Um, I mentioned in my earlier videos, you know, I have taken profits on it. Um, not all, but some because I believe that you should be taking profits in the stock market. That's how you make money. What's the point of just letting something sit and then either run high or never take it out, right? So if you're if you're still in it and you're up, take take some profits. Don't take too much off the top, but take take a little bit. Um, and then watch it, you know. Uh, if it gets to the point where it's getting kind of, kind of close to your average, average pricing uh, of your average buy price, you probably want to get a, a stop loss uh, put on. At that point because um, the worst thing that can happen is you can turn into a, a bag holder and bag holding sucks guys like I do not believe in bag holding I would I will not be a bag holder um, I don't get caught holding the bag that's my motto here okay we're not bag holders um, if you chase this stock right and that happens a lot of people chase this stock. I, I see a lot of stories. I bought it 350. I bought it for somebody told me they bought it at 480. It's one of the poor guy who bought it at 480. I was like, wow, it's like the peak. Um, if you're this person, you need to think about SNDL as a long term position at this point because 
at this point, I don't want you to think about making your money back in a week. It's probably not going to happen anytime soon. And when I say anytime soon, I mean like a month or two. I don't mean like it's going to be like right now. It's not going to be like flip in a day and all the, all of a sudden your money's going to come back, right? So think about it in a long-term position, okay? And if you can, while it's low, if it bottoms out even more, start buying in, but let it bottom out. Don't try to, don't try to buy it while it's falling because that's, that's the equivalent of catching a falling knife. Let it bottom out, then buy in, and let it go back up, and then you'll start equaling your position out. You'll actually start getting towards the point um, where you're going to actually, um, you know, make make a or break even, right? So keep that in mind. But really, those are the two strategies I have for this week, guys. Um, you know, don't panic. You know, that's that's one thing that a lot of people want to have happen, right? Like a lot of these guys who are putting puts on the stock, they, they want you to panic. They're the ones on the internet telling you, oh, you're an idiot. Oh, you're a bag holder. Ha, ha, ha. Time to finally lose all your money. All these guys, the guys who make stupid comments like that, the reason they say that is because they want to discourage you. They're probably holding puts on the stock. Otherwise, they wouldn't waste their time. So keep that in mind, guys. Anyways, that's the video. I hope I was uh, able to kind of ease some of your, your questions or ease some of your tension or stress over this. I know it's a stressful stock to be in. Um, but, you know, just you know, keep them time in hands. Hold strong. Um, if you have a chance to take a little bit of profit, do it. It'll make you feel better, trust me. Um, and, yeah, that's my advice, guys. I will see you in the next one. And if you have any questions, be sure to throw them down in the comment section below, and I'll try to get to them. Other than that, have a great day, guys. Take care of yourselves. Peace.